Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Cryptos News with you always. Myself, Bob, and got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Trill, aka the Crypto Beast. As you guys know by now, we like to take a couple minutes out of our day, kind of jump into some of the news headlines that we see in crypto, bring them to your attention and see what you guys think about them. Um, I'm, at, I'm one of the admins over here at Big One. Scott is also an admin and he handles all the social media content. Um, but before we get started, you know, we, we added a new little segment and uh, it's called the, the, the Crypto B Sentiment. Uh, and Scott, he's he's on social media. So he kind of gives us the feedback from what he he's reading on social media. Plus, you know, some of the things that he's, he's also looking at with, uh, you know, just comments and, and read mediums and, and things of that nature. So over to the Crypto Beast. What do you got for the sentiment today? I feel good about it, but in the same sense, I'm still cautious. I kind of have that feeling that Last time it was like to break 42K, but now it feels like uh, we got to wait until it's like at that 47 range, I believe, until we're closer to 100% more comfortable than where we're currently at. But I mean, everything is running properly. It did drop down to 43, but you want to see that anyways. After it breaks 44, you usually get a retest and it seems to be coming back uh fairly nicely still it's not dropping too badly so yeah man it's been a lot of green on the market today i said this sentence is pretty 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 happy i think people are smiling today we'll see how long this, the smile lasts you know it's always that monday after the, the sunday pump uh you know so we'll, we'll see how the rest of the week plays out but nonetheless we'll jump right into the crypto news uh the first article to be coming from coin telegraph the headline reads kpmg in canada as bitcoin and ethereum to its treasury um, oops, hit the wrong button here. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so it says Big Four Auditor KPMG Canadian Operation has officially added Bitcoin and Ethereum to its corporate treasury, joining other major companies in converting a portion of its fiat holding into digital assets. The decision to add Bitcoin and Ethereum to its balance sheet reflects KPMG's Canada's belief that cryptocurrencies are maturing asset class. Uh, says Benji Thomas, a managing partner uh, for the firm. So, um, you know, people tweeted today, KPMG just announced they have added Bitcoin and Ethereum to the corporate balance sheet. Um, and, and and it's been it's been pretty cool cool to hear about uh, the company's treasury policies overseen by a governance committee that includes stakeholders from several divisions, including finance, risk management, and tax. KPMG said it completed a rigorous risk assessment, including tax uh, implications before deciding to add this to add these digital currencies to their holdings. So uh, really good news. I mean, we, we keep seeing, um, you know, more and more, uh, you know, companies come in and, and start adding digital currencies or digital assets to their balance or to their books. Um, just, you know, good moves, good, good moves. And, and it's good news as well for uh, Bitcoin as well as well as Ethereum. Mm hmm. That's amazing. Canada doing a good old uh, number on the states, kind of a little bit by adding a little bit extra, I guess, too. Yeah. Just say Because we, 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 we also have KPMG, and, 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 and you notice it didn't say KPMG nationwide. It just said KPMG in Canada. Yeah. It's interesting. So my, my first article, I want to read about Shiba Inu, which is, of course, on a big one as well. So I thought this was a really good article. Uh, Shibu Inu sets path for more gigantic growth as the CEO, CEO explains how SHIB price can reach one cent. Stephen Cooper, an ardent SHIB community member, claims to know how to propel the price of the meme coin up to one cent. Cooper is the founder of Bigger Entertainment, which allows for the burning of SHIB tokens through entertainment. In a recent tweet, Cooper stated that they pro the, this approach could potentially burn millions of dollars worth of ship every month if keyed into. Why this platform thinks it can get the price to ship to one cent through token burning? The tokenomics of Shibu Inu have been one of the reasons the Mimi coin is expected not appreci to not appreciate to a reasonable price. Uh, it says to tackle the problem of oversaturation, ship holders have taken to token burning to reduce ship supply. While well, ship tokens can be sent directly to a delegated dead wallet by holders to remove them permanently, permanently from circulating supply, bigger entertainment and its founders aim to make it more rewarding. Steve Cooper, the founder of the platform, says through entertainment, millions of dollars worth of ship could be burnt every month. 
to achieve this, Bigger Entertainment has created several playlists that shipholders can pay to listen to. The platform also holds regular ship burning parties that shipholders can attend via various streaming platforms by purchasing tickets. Added to this are also games that shipholders can play to burn or pay to play. The proceeds from these services are used to purchase ship to be sent to the ship burning wallet, which honestly great idea, like a good way of getting rid of supply. If they could get uh, a lot of users to start using the services, I think you could see definitely some exponential growth when it comes to the burning of the token, which is always good as well, too. Yeah, I mean, that's a good utility. Kind of puts me in the mindset of what M content does as well. Uh, you know, being able to provide entertainment and then making it uh, uh, deflationary where it burns the token uh, for everybody that's using it. So it's pretty cool to hear that Shiv's doing <laughs> something like that. Um, I know M content's listed as well on Bitcoin. You know, what's amazing too with M content is like, you sell a movie or sell the rights to something 50 percent of the profits like you were mentioning automatically get burned which i didn't know that that's incredible like you get it's one funny though, people, when, when you see all that supply you like man how can they get through the supply and it's like oh it's not hard <laughs> it's not hard at all uh, but to jump into my next article my second article for the day is going to be coming from coin telegraph as well the headline read NASDAQ will list Valkyrie's ETF linked to Bitcoin mining firms on February the 8th. So crypto, uh, the crypto asset manager uh, Valkyrie will have an exchange traded fund ETF with exposure to Bitcoin mining firms available for trading on NASDAQ stock market starting on Tuesday. Um, so a spokesman um, for Valkyrie told Cointelegraph that the firm's Bitcoin miners ETF will be traded on NASDAQ on, on Tuesday uh, under the ticker WGMI. We're going to make it. <laughs> uh, according to January 26th, following with this SEC, the, the investment vehicle will not offer direct exposure to Bitcoin, but at least 80% of the net interest will be through securities of the company that derive at least 50% of the revenue or profits from Bitcoin mining or providing a hardware or software related to mining. The filing added Valkyries would, would uh, invest up to 20% of the ETF's net assets and companies holding a significant portion of their net assets in Bitcoin. So uh, here we are again, another major player uh, getting involved with Bitcoin, uh, not, not making it so people can buy it, but what they're doing is they're going to mine it, all right? And all the money that they spend mining, uh, they're going to, you know, you, you know, use use money to you know get the miners going but then once the mining occurs they're gonna you know uh, uh kind of put a portion of their money into digital assets as you can see so this would be pretty cool uh here we are you know more companies getting involved uh another etf always a little shaky on the innocence but uh you know here we go i, I have <laughs> Uh, here's my next article. I find this kind of intriguing. I don't know what they're going to be able to do, but I hope they can pull off some major things here. Uh, Asinj DAO has now raised more Ethereum than Constitution DAO did. Uh, since starting its fundraising efforts on February 3rd, Asinj DAO, Asinj DAO yeah, has raised over 14,329 ETH around $44.8 million, according to Dow fundraising site Juicebox. In four days, Assange Dow, Dow, I don't know why I have a hard time saying that, whose mission is to free Julian Assange, has raised more now than now defunct Constitution Dow formed last fall to bid on a rare copy of the United States Constitution. Now, as far as I know, Constitution Dow is not defunct either i don't know where that guy gets his information from but he obviously hasn't read too much unless something happened as of late <laughs> that i don't know about but uh yeah that's amazing i think it's going to be hard to fight the states they just won a extra extradition hearing on assange a while ago so i'm assuming they're not going to not let him go to the united states 
That's my yeah. feeling. They've been fighting for that guy to go to the States forever on different charges that weren't true and fell through and different sorts of things. So, I mean, yeah. Yep. I don't think this will be the last we hear about this one. <laughs> no, I think there'll be some more news in the future. For Very sure. soon. And jump over to my last article for the day. We're going to jump over to Bitcoin.com. Uh, this is something that I feel like every week or two weeks or at least once a month, we hear something uh, about this this uh, this blockchain. And it's just one that kind of makes me smile as well. Uh, Polygon raises $450 million from Sequoia Capital India SoftBank. Uh, shark tanks kevin o'leary so uh polygon has raised more than 450 million from strategic investors according to a press release sent to bitcoin.com on february 7th the funding round was led by sequoia uh and more than 40 other investors participated in the fundraiser the 450 um, million dollar rounding uh round fund was uh also um participation from galaxy digital uh galaxy interactive Mr. Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, uh, Kevin O'Leary, SoftBank Vision Fund 2, Tiger Global, and Republic Capital. So the fundraise marks the first major Polygon funding round since 2017. The project's native uh, Polygon uh, token, Matic, is the 15th largest crypto, crypto asset in terms of market valuation. Year to date, Matic has gained 3,608% against the US dollar. Um, and then during the last week, Matic has jumped up over 21%. So I feel like we always just keep hearing more little bullish news or bullish partnerships and things with Polygon and Matic. Uh, just one of those L1s you got to got to just keep an eye out for me and, I, and you know we always talk about those those l1s because they're 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 trying to bridge these blockchains and, and offer a solution uh for cheaper transactions uh and they've been able to do it really well so uh i, I like what they're doing and, and this is going to do something uh that's going to help them and essentially this funding round will be something towards their web3 development i'm sure um so i'm pretty sure we'll hear a little bit more about this and it sounds like they got some good vcs on board as well awesome and this one kind of intrigues me because it's the first that this has been done i believe but uh actually no it's not the first so i read there was another one an nft of a ukraine-based studio apartment sold for roughly one hundred thirteen thousand one hundred seventy six dollars of ether last year so not the first one but first one in the us i believe a golf port Florida four bedroom home is hitting the market this week with a $650,000 starting price tag, an otherwise unremarkable listing in a red hot real estate market, or it would be anyways, except for a crypto caveat. Buyers can purchase a home with Ethereum receiving a property deed via an NFT, one of the first such instances to hit the US real estate market. Though it's become commonplace for listings to attract a number of bidders, some 1,500 people have registered for the auction by Tuesday. Talk about competition. Blockchain startup Proppy will host the auction on its online platform. CEO, I don't want to even tell her name, told Blockworks the company service could turn into a standard in the real estate industry. NFT sales reach $4 billion in December 2021, and real-world assets will soon represent a significant portion of the market. Uh, the Florida home's property rights will be minted as an NFT, signifying ownership on-chain, uh, which the CEO says cuts down on closing time. The NFT owner will then own the property via a limited liability company that houses the NFT. The startup previously sold Tech, Tech Crunch's founder Michael Arrington's studio apartment in Ukraine last year for 113,176. So I mean they were the ones that sold that Ukraine studio apartment and now they're selling this house in Florida, which is kind of cool. There is a little bit of hesitation starting to happen in NFTs. I noticed a little bit that the states is kind of striking out against it you are starting to see some articles come out that are discussing copyright laws on NFTs. I think the copyright laws in a decentralized market are going to be really hard for these big companies to combat against. But I mean, the bigger ones do have a ton of patents and stuff. So 
I mean, it's pretty hard to copy what they have versus uh, some of the smaller companies that might be taken advantage of right now. But I don't know. I guess we'll just wait and see what happens. But I, I think we're going to see some crackdown in the next little while on NFTs. I'm just keeping an eye on it as of late. No, I mean, <laughs> no. no man come on man they they haven't caught up that far yet man come on they man. still got work to, to do out, they're still trying to figure out DeFi. <laughs> they might be losing this <laughs> xrp battle out. by the look of it too they, i was about to say they're still trying to figure out xrp <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah we got a while man i think we'll be okay but i, I think you know uh definitely something to keep an eye out for but i think everything will be fine with nfts i think you know that's a good I, that's not the first time i heard about homes being purchased with uh digital currencies i think you know as uh crypto uh gains more adoption and people accept it more regularly you're going to see it happen more uh via accepted currency for purchasing homes and lands and, and things of that things as well as digital assets online so uh that was it on as far as the articles today but we're going to jump right over to trading view real quick look at the total crypto uh market cap as well as a couple of the dominant factors that i like to pay attention to uh right now the total crypto market cap is sitting at a good and tall uh 1.97 uh you know we've seen some some two trillion dollar hits today uh, and then, you know, it's kind of, it did that yesterday as well, kind of getting a little bounce down, like Scott says, trying to find a little bit of support uh, to see if it can kind of balance out for the next leg up. Um, the Bitcoin dominance right now is at 42. Uh, still, this is kind of might be where it kind of sits that 41 to, you know, 42 range is starting to look like it's starting to find a little nice uh, floor right there to kind of like, you know, uh, settle in. And then you got uh, Ethereum dominance at 18.95. So almost in that 19% range again, uh, like where we like to see it, to see uh, Ethereum and some of the other things, uh, layer ones and things like that push. Uh, so I think right now, you know, we're kind of just playing around in a, at, a, at a cool time. I think, you know, we've been talking about it for a while. This isn't the sign that everything's going great, but I mean, you can't, you, if, if there's a time to accumulate it, you know, we, we started to see where those bottoms are capitulating to. So, um, you know, if you were able to accumulate something over the last, you know, uh, month, you, then you did okay, you know, no matter what, uh, mm -hmm. if, if you believe in the market. But um, that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We got a full week ahead of us. Uh, make sure you guys tune in with us uh, tomorrow. We're going to be here again. Uh, click like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you guys think about the videos. Um, but before we get out of here, I'm going to check it over to the Crypto Beast and see if he has anything. No, uh, our Twitter space got changed for M content last minute. They do have a bigger announcement to do on Wednesday, though. So I, I think this is more beneficial to us to wait till Wednesday. They haven't even told anyone what it was. I've talked to a few people that I know that I thought might give me the goods, but they're pretty tight lipped on this stuff they won't let anything out so yeah man it's gonna be something major i i, I think it's gonna be pretty cool man so tune in on wednesday but guys we're back here again tomorrow for another episode of daily crypto news but until then guys appreciate you guys tuning in peace see you guys peace. later mm -hmm. oh, oh 1.98 oh my goodness